Welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you. And John Nichols is on the line with us, the Washington correspondent for The Nation, thenation.com, although he is right now live in Edinburgh, Scotland. Hey, John. Hey, did you hear you, Tom? Say what? It, can you hear me? I hear you just fine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and, in fact, your audio sounds great. Uh, uh, so the, uh, the Scots did not vote to separate from the U.K., but they got a lot of goodies out of this thing. Uh, what, what are you hearing on the ground there? Well, it, it, it's a dramatic day with, by any measure. Uh, you just referendum uh, with, if you can imagine it, Tom, an 86 percent turnout. In some parts of Scotland, uh, whole regions had over 90 yeah. percent. We've, we've never had anything like that in the United States, have we? It's unprecedented. Remember, uh, this is a, a, a referendum where you saw a 75 percent turnout in some of the poorest areas of Scotland. So you really are getting a, a much clearer reflection of the whole people than you ever do in a U.S. election. Right. Uh, but beyond that, you did have a defeat for the referendum. It lost 55-45. And the first minister of Scotland, Alex Salmond, who led the fight for the referendum, has stood down today, announcing that he will leave as first minister, but his party will remain in power. So that's dramatic right there. But the most dramatic development by any measure, and in the great lesson for Americans is, the Scots made a bold demand. They put the issue of independence on the ballot. When the election got close, the English response was to make immense offers to try and keep Scotland within the UK. Uh, remarkably, this morning, British Prime Minister David Cameron announced that he will go forward with a radical devolution of power, uh, not just to Scotland, but to other parts of, of the United Kingdom. To Wales and, and Northern Ireland? And to the north of England, which is one of the most impoverished parts of the country, going, going you know, not just to uh, the, the nations that make up the UK, but also to regions of England. Huh. And, and it gets wilder than that. This afternoon, the Queen announced that the royal family will do everything in its power to facilitate this and to assist in the process. So we're seeing, uh, if you could, it, it's almost incomparable to imagine so many amazing changes taking it's place. It's almost like the election of FDR. Yeah. It, it's Well, we will see. I mean, there's still going to be a brutal battle. Members of Cameron's own party are pushing back on this. There, there will be a fight, but the Labor Party is going to have to support this. The Liberal Democratic Party already essentially does. Uh, and so we will see over the next two to three months, uh, a remarkable process of remaking the United Kingdom because people made a radical demand. And again, I, I focus on that. We can, you know, talk about the subtleties of independence. We can talk about, you know, the, the way the vote came down, all of those things. But there's a powerful lesson here for America. If you ask for a little, you'll get less. If you ask for a lot, you may not get everything you ask for, but you could get something quite remarkable, and that looks to be what's happening here. Right. We need to start standing up and saying, roll back the Reagan tax cuts, bring back the WPA yep. and the CCC, make the employ the government the employer of last resort, blow up all these international trade deals. I mean, just simple, you know, let's just take us back to an America that worked, right? Well, and Tom, let's raise the minimum the wage to a living wage. Pardon me. And let's amend the Constitution to say corporations are not people and right. money is not speech. There you go. You know, these these are that's what Scotland did. And Scotland did not vote for independence, but they got a 45 percent level of support. And if you know anything about politics, what you'll understand is, and I know you do and your listeners do, last week, about a week ago, there was evidence that the, the Scots might well vote for independence. Right. It was at that point that the British made huge promises. So making a big demand and seeing it through... Uh, the lesson is big things can happen. Yeah, absolutely. John, uh, I'm, I'm going to let you go now because the, the, your Skype is starting to disintegrate, but uh, it, your, your points are so well made, and I so appreciate your reporting uh, for us live on the ground there in Scotland today. Thanks so much for being with us. It's a pleasure to be with you, Tom, and uh, keep strong, and we'll talk about some of these things more, I hope. Indeed, when you get back. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, John Nichols, Washington correspondent for The Nation, thenation.com.
uh, check it out. And I'm sure John will be writing about this at some in some depth uh, on the nation's website.